Hello everyone, welcome back. So, we're going to have another Coleman video. Now, I'm going to take this one down. Um, it's got some deep, deep scratches in here. This is a 220J. And I did a little bit of research, not a ton, but um, I believe they call this a black band. And from what I was reading, um, there's a lot of forums out there uh, for Coleman collectors here in the United States and also abroad. And um, Canada has a big following. And from what I read um, on a few of the threads was that the black band had a black blackened um frame now uh i don't i i was taught we're going back and forth with chris um on one of my videos and uh he was saying that that looks like the patina from a um like a vinegar bath and i agree but when you look closely at it it's too like perfect as far as the finish you know, underneath, inside. Um, so I'm going to say it came like that or it was, I, I really, I really don't know. So what we're going to do is we're going to take this apart. Hopefully I can get everything on camera without my hands being in the way. Um, but, uh, and then we'll see what it looks like. What I'm going to be doing is painting the fount. Um, like I said, they, whatever, whoever torched, the, not torched, but, uh, Took the label off, did a lot of scratching on it. Um, we have some letters on the bottom, PTM. We got some rust. So it's a good candidate for the fount to be repainted. And this one is 7 of 78. Oh, yeah. I was in high school, a senior. Woohoo! <laughs> All right. So the, um, the hat's in excellent shape. And that's a good thing because you really can't do much with this, you know, because it's um, a, a porcelain on here. Got a little rust in here. We could take care of that. We'll get rid of that rust and we'll blacken that with some gun blue. But um, let's get that off. The globe's in good shape. No cracks. No chips. We got a little, some kind of like melted plastic or something on here yeah it doesn't look like a chip so we'll clean that up and let's get a closer look at what I was talking about let me move this up so it's totally blackened and I do know that when I do a vinegar bath, it, you know, you could still see the pit marks from the rust. There isn't any on here. I mean, this is smooth. And everything is blackened, even the in air intake tube, everything. So I'm going to say this is the way it was made. Um, and if it wasn't made this way, this is the way it's going to stay because I kind of dig it. <laughs> All right. So the first thing we have to do is we have to get a 7 16 open end wrench. And we're going to loosen this nut right here that locks in the generator. Now, I'm also noticing that generator doesn't look too straight going up into that. So we'll remedy that when we put it back together. Let's see if I need any. Oh, it's going to say any penetrating oil. That came loose. All right. We're going to, does this have, yes, this has a uh, stem cleaner. We're going to put that up in the up position so that we can get the um, eccentric block. Oh, that generator was not even attached. It was not even attached to this. See the little hook there? Yeah, this I don't really know what's on here. I'm wondering if this is painted with some kind of high heat paint. Because if it is, it ain't going to stay on there. 
Look, I'm doing stuff off camera here. Yeah, I'm, I'm, I'm able to scrape this off with my finger. At least off of the brass. Let's not scrape it off of that. I really don't know. At this point, I'm thinking it's possibly painted. Let me get a... Half inch. Let's loosen this nut. Because if it's painted, yeah, I should probably strip it down. looking at it the more and more I'm thinking it is painted but if it was ever lit up this paint would not have lasted aha well there's another signal that I doubt this was um, that this came like this from the factory all right so this should lift right off Yeah, I mean, it's kind of weird to me, like, you know, how did they paint it? Did they, boy, this doesn't look painted down here. Wow, I really don't know. I do not know. All right, so to get, we got to take off this. Where's my little screwdriver? Let's take this apart. Let me move this camera down a little bit all right so we're going to take this off oh that's on there all right that's a nice shape So now we're going to take this off. We're going to, let's see, which way are we going to squeeze this? Let me put this sideways. So what you're going to do is bring it back that way. Just give it a little squeeze. You should be able to lift it up. And then take it off the front. This is a nice shape. Here we got some damage. Paint's chipping. There's not a ton of rust. Nope, not a ton of rust. Got a big rust spot here. And then more initials, PTM. All right, so now I have a choice. Um, am I going to strip it down? And leave the valve in the air cleaning assembly and the, the fuel valve while I paint it or am I going to take it totally apart um, this looks bent yeah this is bent all right so I have to straighten that out hopefully you can see that that's pretty wobbly but you can see the eccentric moving up and down the eccentric block all right so I have to straighten that out which means I might have to take the packing out and I'll go along with my new adventure of repacking that um, I think I'll probably attempt to take that valve out all right so we have my vice set up I have a video on this 
Thanks to Rob for showing us how to make this. Let's see, what position do I want this? Lefty Lucy. Yeah, this. Uh, let's see. I think I'm going to put it in this position. All right, I'm going to back this up a little bit. Now I got to figure out how I'm going to get a grip on that and take it out. I'm thinking. Whoa. Whoa. All right. I'm thinking I'm going to try to use this and come up in here like this. And I'm going to put a piece of leather on there. And I'm going to try to loosen it. Let me get a piece of the leather. I got too much wiggle room there. I'm going to cut this leather. Let me bring All it right, back. So I now have two pieces of leather. It should let me get that on there tighter. Yes. All right, wish me luck. Okay, I'm telling you, this vice makes jobs like this so, so simple. I mean, I would have struggled. I know I would have struggled, but Dan, right? Putting it in between your thighs, it's not easy, okay? This is a very steep tapered thread and it, it locks in there. All right, so we gotta get this out. Let's see what it looks like inside. You know what? Look at that. I'm very pleased with that. That is not corroded. There's not a lot of nastiness. So that means inside the fount's gonna be good. All right, so we got the valve out. Now, at this point, this could be stripped. So I'm using uh, just a regular paint stripper. What's it called? Jantco or something like that. Uh, but if it was all rusty inside the fount, what I would do is I would heat up some vinegar, um, add some salt, and I would submerge this. I would, well, I would take out this, the valve stem here. Oh, actually, I don't even know if this, what this is called. But uh, the check valve is in here. I would take the check valve out, okay? I would take this out, and I would submerge this whole thing into vinegar, you know, so it's totally covered, totally filled inside, and let that soak. And that vinegar and salt, uh, hot vinegar and salt, will um, dissolve this paint. And it doesn't dissolve it, but it softens it to the point where um, a wire brush could get it off. All right, but I don't think I'm going to do that because all of my preliminary checks. Yeah, this has got a little, little rust on the top, but it does not look too bad. Um, so I'm going to, like I said, I'm going to strip it down. I'll take a closer look inside if it needs to be cleaned inside. Um, I'll probably put um, an evapor rust or something like that in there. Uh, I probably won't go with the vinegar and salt this time. Uh, the evapor rust is cool. We'll get that in there and we'll clean that out. 
but uh, I'm putting the horse before the cart here. First thing we're going to do is get the paint off of this and uh, see what it looks like underneath. Because a lot of times when you have rust on the top, there's actually rust sitting underneath the paint that you don't even see. So I'll, uh, once I get this out of the vise and I can get a light in there, I'll look inside. And if I decide that I have to clean the inside, if it's nasty, I'm going to do that before I strip it. But I'll bring you back and I'll let you know. So when I come back, you'll know I either had to clean the inside or we're good. All right, so I have the fount stripped down. Inside was good. I just flushed it out. Um, there was no nasties in there, so we're fine with that. Um, I have it stripped. Um, and I use, this is uh, 320 aluminum oxide. Man, my great camera skills there, eh? Yeah, so this is 320 aluminum oxide emery cloth. This stuff is great for metal. This is what I use um, if I'm going to re-blue parts for firearms. This works great. So, a couple things. Um, I had a couple pits, especially on the bottom. Um, they were kind of nasty. So what I do is, after I clean them out, I use some of this stuff here rust dissolver jelly, which is basically like a navel jelly. I make sure I get all the rust out. I'll run a wire brush over it. And then I'll get some primer. And I'll literally spray some primer into a little paper plate and get a fine brush, a little artist brush, and I'll dab those spots to fill them in. I don't know if it'll show up. But I got one there. Got a couple here, a couple here, and some on the bottom. So basically what that does is it fills in the pits. Now you could prime it first, and then you could um, you know, sand it a little bit and fill them in afterwards, or you could use some other type of filler. But I found if you do it before you put the primer on, you know, spray paint the whole thing, that it, uh, it's much easier to get it done that way. All right, so we're going to get some primer on that. Now, this. This did not come from the factory like that. That's paint on there. Um, I reached out to uh, Frank from Old Town Coleman. Uh, if you don't know who he is, definitely go check him out on YouTube. Awesome, awesome site. Um, he ran a museum, the Coleman Lantern Museum, out, I think, where is he at? I want to say maybe Iowa or Michigan. He's out west. Um, and uh, very, very knowledgeable about uh, all the Coleman products. And I reached out to him and I asked him if he ever saw one like that. And he said no. And he's because I had read somewhere. I don't know I where. I can't for the life of me find the, the article or the, I, you know what it was? It was a forum somewhere. And somebody had said, I've never seen uh, a, uh, what do you call it, um, a black collar that didn't have a black frame. So I, I just cannot, I know I read it, I just can't find it. So, uh, but this was definitely painted. There's a lot of signs, like I said, if you look down at the bottom, it's not the same color. So what I did was, this, uh, this piece here, which actually holds the frame down, um, I put it in some warm vinegar and salt, and literally in five minutes, the paint stripped off. So I have a little bit of a bigger job to do now. I have to soak this whole entire unit here. Is this, the um, air intake tube does not come off, okay? It's... You can see down there, it's spread out on the bottom. I mean, I guess you could get it off if you want, but there's really no reason to. So that's got to soak. Get rid of all of that black paint. Um, here's the, uh, I'm not sure what part this is called, but this come, came out of the valve. Where's the valve? This came out of this valve, okay? So now... Um, 
and it's inside the tank. Man, my camera skills are lacking. So this is going to get soaked in vinegar. You got this pin here. This you can see there's some corrosion on the end there. So that'll get soaked. And then the generator needs to be taken apart, and that's going to soak. So what you do is you take that nut off, take this tip off, carefully, usually if you tap it, you can pull out, whoop, there it goes. And be extremely careful because there's like a needle-like point on this. You don't want to bend that, okay? So we got that. And then inside here is a spring. A lot of times if you just tap it, if it doesn't come out, you got some work to do. Uh, let me see, what can I get here? Sometimes I'll get a, just a little push pin and see if I can grab it. Okay, we got it. All right, so now this is just basically a tube. So that's going to go in the vinegar. Then we have a spring. Spring's in good shape. I don't really see anything wrong with that. There's no rust on it. And then this is just a paper collar filler. Um, I don't really need to do anything with that. I'll just kind of clean it off a little bit. So I'll get that stuff soaking in vinegar. I'll get some primer on the fount. Once I have the fount primed, I'll bring you back. I'll show you a quick look at that. And then uh, we have to start to see what we could do once everything is soaked and what it looks like. All right. I shall be back. All right. So it's all primed. Um, just a quick tip. Don't go crazy with the primer because you got to remember now you're going to be putting, uh, you know, one or two coats of paint on top of that. And you don't want a huge buildup. Um, so just, you know, a light coat. Make sure you have full coverage. Um, I like to get that done as soon as possible after I have uh, stripped it because it will surface rust again. So basically, I want that coat of primer on there to just seal everything in, and then I'll let it dry. Have patience. Um, I'll let this dry at the very, very minimum, 24 hours, okay? You can read the can. It'll tell you, yeah, 20 minutes, it's dry to the touch, and... In an hour, you can handle it. Um, but I've learned through experience, don't mess with it. Don't touch it. If you got a drip or something, just leave it, okay? Leave it for a full 24 hours. This, you know, primers could be wet sanded. You can wet sand them as long as you have the right kind of sandpaper. And you can fix little minor mistakes. But just let it sit. Like I said, 24 hours minimum before you do anything else okay this way you get a good look at it and then you get ready to put your top coat on and then back there um, I have the frame soaking in my uh, salt and vinegar mix so when I bring you back I'll probably be working on that okie dokie all right this has been soaking for about three hours and I know why they painted it. There's some rust on here. It's not a ton that I could see so far, but some of this, hopefully you can see this, am I in frame? Comes right off, but where it doesn't, there's rust underneath. Let's see if I can get a spot to show you come, come off. See that? There's no rust underneath it. I don't even know how this is coming out. I'm outside here. No rust, it comes right off. So I'm gonna have a lot of work trying to strip this. On here, see that? And it Looks like they may have lit this up, man, and burnt this on. Oh, there you go. Look at that. So that's where we're at. Um, I'm going to let it soak some more. I'm actually going to, uh, I'm going to try something. I have a fish tank heater. I'm going to put a heater in there and see if I heat the water up. 
if it'll uh, help it go a little faster. And this is going to take days. So um, I think I mentioned it. It's been in there like three hours. So I'm going to leave it overnight and see what that one side looks like. I, I didn't have enough vinegar to soak the whole thing at one time. So I'm going to have to flip it over and do the other side. So I'll bring you back when I have that out of the vinegar and cleaned, hopefully. All right. So the frame is out of the vinegar um, and salt mixture and cleaned up. And I am uh, I'm definitely pleased with it. It came out really nice. There really wasn't a ton of rust under there that I thought there would be. Some was surface rust. There were two spots that I had to use navel jelly. Um, and then I use a... I use a screwdriver to, let me show you. If, you. if you can see this, it's sort of rounded. It's not very sharp. And what I do is, I already did it. I should have filmed it. But basically what I'll do is put the navel jelly on it. And I'll work it with this screwdriver very gently. And you might say to yourself, oh, you're going to put a ton of scratches in. It really doesn't because it's kind of pitted. Um, and you just want to get that rust out. You'll see when you do it, it turns into like a, an orange soup. And you just keep doing that, clean it off, do that, clean it off, and you'll get it out. I mean, it was pretty deep. Um, let me see if I could show you the spot. It was right here. Yeah, I don't think the lighting is going to show it. But basically, a spot here and a spot here. And um, got all the rust out. There's a couple little pits, but I'm, I'm definitely pleased with this. And there's the bottom. It's just got a little bit of oil on it now. But all of that black paint came off. And I definitely think it looks presentable. So, the next thing I'm going to do is um, I'm going to paint the uh, fountain. Okay, when I get the, the fount painted, I'll bring you back and we'll do a couple more little things. All right, so the fount is painted. I'm definitely digging it. It looks nice. And what I use, I tried Rust-Oleum Hunter Green. I tried Krylon Hunter Green. Um... There's one other one I might attempt to get, but to be honest with you, I think I'm going to stick with this color. This is um, Ace Hardware Gloss Enamel Deep Forest. And the reason why I'm like 99.9% .9 sure I'm going to stick with this color is because now this is the third uh, fount that I painted this color. So when, when I'm displaying them, they're all going to have the same color because uh, those of you that restore these or collect these um, will know that the colors are like all over the place. Um, it's basically whatever Coleman decided they want, uh, you know, I think I mentioned it in another video. So the vent, uh, the ventilation cap or the hat, whatever you want to call it, um, comes back from the factory that uh, does the porcelain on it and then they try to match that color, okay? So, again, I've never seen one that had two different, it had like a matching color perfectly. I did notice that the older ones have a darker color, like very similar to what I have here. So, basically, I'm probably not going to try Rust-Oleum Dark Hunter Green. And I am going to stick with this Ace Premium Paint. I like the way it goes on. Um, it's cheaper, like a dollar something cheaper. I mean, that's not the ultimate factor, but I like the way it goes on. It has a very wide spray on it versus a small round one. It's sort of like, I don't know what you call it, but that's the way that the tip looks. And they call it um, easy spray or something. Comfort tip, easy to spray. So anyway... If you're going to try one, try this color because it's definitely going to be my go-to color. All right, so that's going to dry. And again, I'm going to wait um, at least 24 hours. And then that's going to get a couple coats of uh, VHT gloss 
clear gloss engine enamel, okay, and then it's got to get baked. But I'm putting the uh, horse before the cart here, or the cart before the horse. So I'll bring you back when we do some small parts, and then before we, uh, when we go to do that, I'll show you the paint. All right, so I straightened out the, um, the tip cleaning assembly. It's pretty straight. I'm okay with that. Um, as far as cleaning this up, I don't know if I'm going to really do anything to it, to be honest with you. I'll clean the threads. Um, the, uh, there's packing in here, and there's packing in here, graphite packing. And I didn't test it to see if there was any leaks, but I don't think there's going to be because this is, they're all very tight. Um, so I'll probably just take like a, um, a scotch Bright and just go over it a little bit. I'm not going to go crazy because I don't want to dip this whole thing into vinegar. Um, so, you know, I'll clean it up, but I'm, I'm not going to go crazy. Now this, I don't know what I want to do. This has got, um, I don't know what this is on there. I don't know if there's a coating, like a clear coat on this. Um, I'm going to guess there is, because this is probably obviously printed on there. Um, so what I'm going to do is just use a soft cloth and some soap, like dishwasher soap, and clean it. I don't, I think these are scratches. So what I might do is, I might check an inconspicuous spot, like let's say, I don't know, maybe over here, tape this off, and um, just put a shot of clear on it to see if it takes that away. Um, if it does, great. If it don't, I'll try to carefully remove the clear, and otherwise it'll just stay the way it is. Because, again, I'm not looking for making this a museum piece. I mean, after all, I want to light it and enjoy it. So uh, I'll bring you back when I get to the next step, <laughs> whatever step that's going to be. All right. All right. So I'm back. So after I paint the fount, I let it um, cure, basically. Um, most of you know, but if you don't, after you spray paint something or regular brush paint something, it takes quite a while for the paint to actually cure. Okay, um, it'll be dry to the touch in X amount of time and okay to handle in X amount of time and fully dry after X amount of time. But curing is different than all of that. Um, like, for example, cement, you can walk on cement after a couple of days, but it takes years, years until it gets to its full potential as far as hardness goes. Because it's constantly curing, okay? So, I paint the fount. I let it sit for two or three days. Um, when I was younger, I was notorious for not letting something, um, you know, dry long enough, cure long enough. And I would end up with my fingerprints in the paint. And I, I would just mess up paint jobs. So, my best advice to anyone who's not, who doesn't paint things a lot, just let them sit. Don't be in a rush to finish your project, okay? Have patience and just let it sit. You'll, you'll be rewarded for your patience. So, after the, that's actually um, two coats of primer and two coats of the um, Ace Forest Green Gloss. And then I use this. And this is VHT high temperature engine enamel gloss clear. Now, I don't do that. I don't use this for its high temperature value because the fount does not get hot. What I use this for is its chemical resistance. Okay? Because if you're like me, you're spilling some gas on your tank. And regular spray paint does not do well when you put a solvent on it. And basically, the gas is a solvent, okay? So, um, if they made a high temperature uh, engine enamel in a nice green color, I would love to use that because it would leave out that whole step of having to put this gloss clear on, but they don't. 
Um, I've a few commenters have said, oh, you could go to an auto body store and they'll match the color and make make it. Um, but again, I'm just doing stuff off of you know, just stuff I have laying around. Go to Ace, buy a you know five dollar can of spray paint. So this stuff is it's not cheap. It's about if I had to guess, I think I paid fourteen bucks for it. But this is the third fount I did with it. And I probably have enough in there to do another one or two. So you're not using a ton of it. But you have to follow the directions. And the directions are kind of weird, like as far as painting goes, at least in my experience. You put on two very light coats. Um, and when they go on, they don't look like... It, it looks... It's hard to explain. Almost looks spotty, kind of, because... It's not a heavy coat. And they say to do those coats 10 minutes in between. So I tried one time not to follow the directions and I put a decent coat on and it crackled on me, okay? So follow directions. You're gonna put two very light misting coats on it. They'll go on, you'll be like, nah, that doesn't look right. But when it dries, it looks right. And then um, the third coat is going to be a medium wet coat. And that's where you'll see, okay, yeah, that looks good. Now, I let this dry for, hmm, again, it, it says in an hour, it's dried at a touch. I wait, on this case, I waited 48 hours um, before I actually did the curing process, okay? Now, you have to cure this paint to make it chemically resistant, okay? So, you need to put it at 200 degrees for one hour. And um, do not use your oven in your house. That would be dangerous. It'll, it off-gasses, okay? It smells, and it's just not a good thing. So, what I do is I use my barbecue, and I have a four-burner barbecue. I put a piece of... Uh, the heavy-duty aluminum foil on the rack to keep this away from any direct flames. And I'll put this at the complete opposite end of the burner I'm using. And I'll regulate the uh, barbecue to get to 200 degrees. I keep my eye on it. You may have to adjust your flame here or there. But a uh, just off of low on my barbecue gives me 200 degrees. And I leave it in there for one hour. Then I shut it off and I just let it cool down naturally. And that's what you end up with. I think it came out beautiful. And again, I'll let this sit at a very, very, very minimum of 24 hours. Probably 48, maybe even longer. Again, I learned not to rush this. And I'm actually waiting for my um, Coleman decals to come. So it's basically going to sit... In this little thing I made, just a little, you know, stand to hold it so it doesn't touch the bottom of the barbecue. Um, it'll sit in there until I get those decals. Then I'll uh, I'll start the assembly process. So when we get to that point. I'll bring you back. All right. So it's been a couple days. The founts all dried up. Um, so the first thing I'm going to do is put this valve back in. Now, according to Frank over at Old Town Coleman, he's put together, I don't know how many hundreds of these, and he never used any thread sealer on it. Um, mm -hmm. Coleman does. I've done one or two without, um, and I've done one or two with. So today I'm just going to use some Threadlock Blue. Now, the blue stuff is not permanent. The red stuff and the green stuff is permanent. Um, so just a little belt and suspenders approach. Just a little bit.
Now you want this valve to be um, perpendicular to these two, the uh, pump and the filler cap. Now I'm not going to go crazy cranking it down, but I do have to give it a little turn to get that lined up. Let me get my... big old crescent wrench probably should have had this in the other direction but I should be able to do it yeah I'm gonna, I should turn this actually I'm just gonna squeeze around this side Okay, I need to take out the uh, tip cleaner. Give me a second. All right, I just remembered. I didn't take it off the last time. I'm just going to go in from the front. Let's put this on here. Okay, that looks lined up. All right, let me get it out of there and reset up. All right, so I got all the pieces here. I, I put the pump in um, already. Uh, I should have videoed it, but uh, I have to check. I might have. But um, no, I don't think I did. I don't know why. But anywho, we're off to the next section. I got to put, to put on this um, collar, the frame stand. So we got to do it the same way I did, but opposite. I got to bend this, put it on the front first, then kind of squeeze it a little bit, get it on there, and then bring it back to around. Okay. Now, I have this little piece of uh, the top from a... Um, coffee can. You can slip that under there to kind of protect the, um, the fount. But this one shouldn't be a problem. I don't have to tweak anything. Now just remember you got these tabs here. The tabs go along the side, not where the valve stem comes out. So that goes like that. I'm actually going to take this out because it's kind of in the way. You kind of get everything lined up. And you put this in. I don't know what this is called. This may be a frame plate or something, but that's what's actually holding the frame down. Then you get your retaining nut. Then I have another little tool. This is just a cheap old wrench that I bent. You gotta tighten that up. Okay, don't go crazy on it. Then uh, we're gonna get our generator, and you turn your cleaning tip. I don't know if you're going to be able to see this. Let me zoom in a little. So I'm going to turn my tip cleaning valve 
until it pops all the way up. Hopefully you can see that. And then on here, you got that little hook at the end of the generator. You want to slip it up top first. And then hook it into that little hole. Come on now. And then flip the generator back down, uh, the uh, tip cleaning handle back down. And then you can put this back on. And tighten the nut. That's a compression fitting there, so make sure you uh, make that snug. All right, let me get some mantles, and uh, we'll put the right. mantles on. I got the mantles. Before I do that, let me put the little valve cover back, uh, valve handle, whatever you want to call it, knob back on. Come on now. That's a one. All right, now turn your mantle so that they're uh, parallel to here, I guess, you want to call that, like that. All right, so basically, at this point, we are ready to uh, light this up. Let's see if there's anything in here. Let's give her some pressure. Actually, let's uh, burn the mantles. Let me get my wonderful camera skills here. Let that smoke died down for a minute. It's a smoking. <laughs> In the interim, let me come around this side. If I can not hit the camera. Okay, Coleman recommends 30 pumps. Let me see if I can hear fuel come out.
Yeah. I believe I did. All right. Let me get my match ready. Turn on the gas. They both light. Thought I saw some ignition there. Give it another couple pumps. There she goes. Okay. I have a problem with my tip cleaner. Let's see. Remember it was bent? I wonder if I should have tried, I should have tightened it when I loosened that. Maybe I didn't tighten it enough. Let's see. I'm not taking it apart again at this moment, but let's see what happens. All right, so that's either a generator or the uh, something with that tip cleaner valve. But we do have ignition, so I'm happy with that. Let me kick her off again. Or am I losing pressure somewhere? Let's see. No. Got pressure. But I see smoke coming out over here. Huh. I wonder. Maybe that valve was a little loose. We're going to call that good. All I need now is to get the label. Um, 
it didn't come today. It's been about, I don't know, two weeks. And it really should have been here. It's only coming from Canada. But uh, when I get the label, I'll throw it on there. But there you have it. Another uh, Coleman restoration. I hope you enjoyed it. I do appreciate you coming along. Um, the uh, Once you do one of these, you'll start to learn the little tips and tricks and tweaking them. It's like anything, you know. Uh, you start to learn when it does this, you need to do that. And when it does that, you need to do this. So um, it's all a learning game. And again, I'm just like an amateur right now, um, you know, learning. But uh, I think it came out great. Thank you again for coming along. I'm sending you all much, much love and appreciation. I hope you enjoyed it, and we'll see you on the next one.